Hi, besties. Um, I have so many things to do. Reading is one of the things that I have to do, but I have so many other things to do too. You know, you've got this to-do list. <laughs> you know, you've got a to-do list and it's like half the things on there are just hobbies. Is that funny? Is that so funny? Yeah. Half the things on there are just hobbies, but they're still like burning a hole on your to-do list. Um, that's my problem. I'm like, I want to do nails. I want to read. I want to write. But um, I also have to clean the entire house and take care of the kids and water the garden and take out the trash. I want to do all of those things. Um, and I need to do some of them before reading. Thank goodness audiobooks exist. This is going to just be the experience of reading while an adult. Some of the time I'm reading. Some of the time I'm listening to a book. And some of the time I'm doing neither of those things. So we're going to start with a few things I can, I'm going to do before I start listening to a book. I'm going to put the kids down, then I'm going to take a shower, then I'm going to start listening to a book and cleaning while I'm listening. If you're interested in following along, be my guest. I've dabbled with the idea of a, like a read with me or a what, blah 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 reading blog, um, but then the fact is that like reading in my experience is not very aesthetic. Because I'll read for like 10 minutes on my dirty couch while my kids watch Curious George, um, like, you know, for 30 minutes before making dinner. And then like, I'll read in bed and fall asleep with my Kindle on my face, you know? Not aesthetic. However, Mom, I don't this. think that most people- I have two colors on Very cool. <laughs> I don't think that most people are reading in an aesthetic <laughs> way. So like, there's no reason for me to pretend. It's just gonna be, I'm cleaning, I'm putting my house together, I'm being a stay-at-home mom, listening to a book, and maybe I'm reading. I put the kids to bed, I took out the trash, started the laundry, so now I just have to take a shower, and then I will start listening to my book. The book I'm listening to, by the way, is Uprooted by Naomi Novik. I'm really liking it. Um, I'm gonna listen to that and continue to clean. But first I have to take a shower. I just got back from the gym. Disgust. Shower is done. I ate some chicken nuggets. I got out meat for dinner and I got my book. I'm ready to clean. So during the course of this video, I finish Uprooted by Naomi Novik. I really enjoyed it. So I'm gonna be talking about it, you know, while you watch me do this. Um, Naomi Novik has a really recognizable way of writing. This is actually my fourth book that I've read by her, but it's the first beside the Scholomance trilogy. I talked about A Deadly Education, but I didn't say anything on the second and third books in the trilogy, so I'm just going to say a word about those now. Um, I loved them. <laughs> I loved them so much, and I really liked the narrator. It's a different narrator than did this, um, then did Uprooted. Um, I think that that actually made the reading experience like even more enjoyable for me because the narrator was so good. And honestly, her books are really long um, and they do lend well to a bit of like mind wandering. Um, if I were reading it on the page, I'm sure that I would be getting bored and I would probably put it down. But there's something about listening to it that was really nice. Now that I've read them, I'd gladly go back and reread them on paper. But when you're not sure what the ROI is, uh, I find that listening to books is a great way to get through some of the beefier books on your list. She has a way of writing female protagonists that I love. There's actually a lot of similarities between the Scholomance books and this book. And I think the protagonist is the biggest one. She's like spunky, but not in a pick me way. She's daring and brave, but she also complains a lot and gets confused and doesn't know what to do. And overall, she's pretty realistic and relatable. Both of her, both of these books have, or I should say the Scholomance trilogy and this book both have an Eastern European, possibly like old Russian folk tale background to them. I really love that because it's my first time reading something like that. Um, and it's just like, kind of new to me and um, she also has a way of incorporating romance that doesn't dominate the story but leaves you totally satisfied 
Her heroines aren't just female characters. They are actual heroines who save the day. And, you know, the guy does some stuff too. Uprooted is the story of a girl who lives in a small village that is close to a magical and very deadly forest. There's a wizard in the area that they call the dragon that takes a girl into the tower with him at for 10 years. So every 10 years he chooses a new girl. And she's always really changed when she comes out. As you can imagine at the beginning of the story, um, he takes our main character. She becomes the main character, obviously. Um, he takes her into the tower with him. Um, and the story follows her finding her true you know, meaning, calling, and, you know, ending up saving the kingdom, of course. It's got monsters and creepy crawlies and magic that is, like, all-consuming. However, if you're looking for a she's a peasant girl and he's a wizard and they're stuck together in a tower for the whole book, he 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 type of story, this is not for you. This is not that. It takes a lot of turns and has a lot of landscapes, and her learning the true personhood of the dragon is just one small facet of a huge, huge story. Um, if you like sorceresses and big magic, capital B, capital M, then I suggest this book. And also the Skullman's trilogy. There are lines that like still stick with me from the Skullman's books that I just loved so much. And from this book too. Uh, there's a certain something that Naomi Novik writes with that is really hard to quantify, but I really love. It's like faded love, but more like faded magic. A girl who realizes she has big, big shoes to fill and she goes above and beyond filling them. She can la mandela mort anything, eviscerate, raise, lay waste to anything and she'll use it to save you. Oh, I will say this book did lose me a little bit near the end, like the last two hours or so. Somewhat harder for me to follow along than the rest of the book. Um, but I think overall it still held up. And I would still recommend it, but only if you like thicker, like deeper, I don't know, fantasy. Um, and do not be deceived. This is not romanticy. Don't let anyone tell you that it is romanticy. It's not. There is a very slight romance subplot, side plot, but it is not the main story at all. Um, in fact, the guy, like is not there for a huge portion of the book in the middle. Um, so that is what I have to say on Uprooted. Really liked it. And um, let me know what you've thought if you have read it. Um, and if you read uh, any of the Scholomance books as well, I'd love to know your thoughts on those too. It's the next day. It's raining outside. It might not be raining right now, but it was storming like crazy earlier, so it's still kind of dark and beautiful and wonderful and amazing and perfect. Um, so I'm going to attempt to have a little reading time with the kids. I'm going to read a little bit of it's right here. The Wizards of Once by Cressida Cowell wrote How to Train Your Dragon, and this is a really interesting book. She had total creative control. She <laughs> did a lot of art in it. Anyway, it's really cute and cool, so I'm gonna read that. I didn't have a second almost to say a single word on the Wizards of Once. I was, when you're, like this video that you're watching, I actually was finishing up reading uprooted but I did have some moments throughout the day to read a little bit of the wizards of once and all I have to say is that I actually decided to give up on the book I read about 80 pages or something and I just feel like the story like literally hadn't started yet um I don't mind that in books that aren't children's fantasy like 80 pages is not that much but since it's children's I know that there's a small chance that there will be like a really big payoff or even like a reasonable payoff so if I'm slogging through the beginning I know there's like a possibility that I that it will not be made up for later in the book so I actually am am not gonna finish it um, anyone who has finished it, let me know what you thought. It's a series, so there's more than one book. So let me know what you thought of those. Um, I hope you enjoyed this style of video. It's kind of a little bit newer for me. I really liked making it. I had a lot of fun. It even allowed me to, you know, get some more things done than I'm normally getting done. So overall, good experience. Um, yeah, I will see you in the next one. Bye!